Hey everyone, uh, I have a really exciting show for you. I have someone that I met, let's call it six months ago, and he just wowed me with his professionalism, his energy, and his willingness to help. So let's welcome Max Keller to the show. How are you doing this morning, Max? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing very, very well. I, I, I mean what I said. Uh, you were so impressive when I met you. Not only are you doing lots of different things, your background, your story, um, but your willingness to help others was so so just out there in, in the meeting we were both at. So uh, kudos to you uh, for being that kind of quality person. So thank you for that. Uh, well, it wasn't me because, you know, people can be raised a lot of different ways and the same person can turn out a lot of different ways. You know, they have those identical twin mm -hmm. studies and they're separated at birth. Environment's real, you know, so I had a lot of great people helping me. Of course, my grandma, who is, you know, a huge part of my life, even though she passed away, she's still with me every day, uh, character development. And, you know, so it's very powerful. So, you know, all the credit to her. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you know what? Let's jump into your real estate story first. I know you've done lots of things. Uh, last I heard, I think you've done over 100 flips. But why don't we start back at the beginning, right? What was it that pushed you in or motivated you to even start looking at this? Sure. Well, I really had no intention to be a full-time real estate investor. Um, I was a teacher. I was working at inner city school, teaching um, you know, high school math challenging subject for a lot of people and just really enjoying it, you know, helping the kids. You know, I got a lot of awards and it was just like the perfect fit for me. The only problem was, well, take a guess what you think the problem may have been. I had a big family and I was, <laughs> what do you think it might've been? Well, let's tell everybody what you mean by big family. Cause you have a big family. Big, at the time it was four kids, one on the way. Now it's six big family needs some big income, not huge. I don't need Rockefeller money, but you know, I wanted to do a, make a little bit more and I was off in the summer and I felt like I was the only teacher. I love teachers that like was okay with that. So I was trying to start businesses. My friends said they wanted to do that and they just, we got close to signing a deal or something and they didn't want to do anything. And I had a friend who has a big family too. He said he bought a rent house and uh, used a home equity line of credit on a 80, 20 loan. And I was like, he's a real conservative guy. And I was like, huh, a rent house. And I had, really not thought about it a lot before. This was, I guess, four or five years ago. You know, the years are all starting to blend together. <laughs> um, so anyways, I looked into it. Um, I got, you know, excited about it. And then I just started doing it for the school year. And my intention was, is just to keep teaching and just buy one rental at a time. I just wanted to get one rent house. You know, my friend was buying one a year. Yeah. And he kind of showed me the math. He's like, you know, if I buy one a year, we were in our late thirties, you know, by the time some of the bills start getting a little bigger. You know, you have 10, 20 paid off rentals. You know, you're in a pretty good situation. We're here in, uh, you know, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. The median home price is about $250,000, uh, you know, for a brick home. And, you know, the rents you used to be able to get a 1% deal pretty easily. If you're all in, you know, 100, 150, you could do a thousand or 1500 rent. So, you know, the numbers work, you know, I could invest in my local area. Um, I didn't have to go, you know, three hours away. So that was it. I was just on, you know, one rental at a time before I even knew that was a name before you created, <laughs> before you created it. That's okay, <laughs> so that's right? <laughs> yeah. So that was it. And then, um, what happened was, is that I, there was a lot of opportunity in the market. I enjoyed it. I had to hire a VA to answer the phone for me because I was teaching during the day. Yeah. And so because I wasn't able to do stuff during the day, I was building out the team. There was deal flow. The numbers are a lot bigger. And so now I started seeing, um, you know, real estate is a way to not only grow my passive income, but also, you know, dramatically increase my active income, which can help me get to my passive income goals faster. Right. And so it was just, I, like I said, no intention of teaching and or leaving teaching. And I just did. And I think it's been three or four years now, full time. And, you know, the flips and, um, you know, we're involved in um, publishing and it's, it's been really good. It's, I find that if you still focus, like the teaching hasn't left yeah. and I feel like you can get a lot further in whatever endeavor if you just try to, you know, ed learn first and then, you know, educate and help others. Yeah, that's awesome. I always make sure we talk about that first deal. Do you remember that first rent house, kind of how you found it, what the numbers were, how it turned out? Uh, let's see. Yeah, my first rental property um, it could have gone either way. It could have been a flip or a rental, just like a lot of it at the beginning. I think I was all in on that one, 150 on a, maybe the rent was 1650, something like that. So it wasn't like a home run deal, but it wasn't bad. Yeah. Um, geez, I don't remember. I might've actually only been in like 120, but yeah, what would happen was, is I was, as I would flip homes and wholesale homes, I was getting started, 
you know, I would find the deals that worked a little bit better. The numbers were a little better. I liked the area. I liked the quality of the construction. And then I would keep those for my rentals. And at first, you know, it was just one or two here or there. And then it got to be more. And, and um, you know, it's just, it's a journey. I mean, I think it is okay to sell a rental once in a while. Some people are like, don't ever do that. But I mean, in markets where the appreciation goes up a lot, if you, if you look at it just in an eight or 10 year capsule, maybe not. But I mean, if you look at it historically, there's ups and downs. So yeah. we did that a little bit. And um, it's been a, it's been a great journey. But I, I like, for me, I've had the most success increasing my active income because I feel like yeah. it isn't that I couldn't have gotten to my rental goals, but on a teacher salary with a big family, um, it just would have taken a lot longer. And I like going faster if I can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, certainly said, right? Rental houses, cash flow, right? It's, it's especially in the beginning, right? The first four, five, six, whatever it is, they're just like little drips. You're like, mm -hmm. you turn around and go, oh, well, there's 50 bucks on the ground, but I just busted, busted it for a, a month or whatever. Right. So, yeah. So, I, it sounds like you jumped in like you always do, feet first, uh, and really started attracting deal flow, right? You had, to, you had to get a VA because you're in teaching math to inner city kids and all of that. Um, what were you doing? Just uh, So, this was five years ago, let's call it. Were you doing direct mail and bandit signs and all of that stuff, or what, what was it for you? Yeah, it was all of the above. You know, there's a cycle, you know, and depending on where your market is in the cycle is going to pretty much determine where you're getting your deal flow from, you know, and it's, it's a progression. There's a pyramid formula to everything. And so it starts out, I've, I've never actually bought an MLS property in our state. I have in other states, but I've never bought one in Texas, um, a single family home, a mobile home. Yes, but not a single family home. But for single family homes, yeah, when I was just buying them, flipping them, acquiring them, it was all the above marketing that you were talking about. It actually, it was a journey. And what happened was I felt like every year, every month, more and more people just kept getting into the business, which is good. Hey, there's yeah. opportunity. There's plenty for everybody. Yeah. But what was happening was is folks were really overpaying for properties. It was getting very difficult with the traditional methods. You know, when somebody's getting 20 postcards a week, it's hard to stand out. So for me, I don't, you know, there was, it's kind of, if you go back, you can't remember exactly how it happened, but you know, through a lot of help and support and, you know, prayer, I just decided, um, let's try to come up with like a different way to attract customers. And that's when I wrote my first book and the, and that was home to home, the step-by-step -step senior housing guide. And it was actually kind of a funny journey. I think when you get to maybe rock bottom or just frustrated, that's when your best ideas come out. Yeah. And so for, for me, you know, I had a, I remember pulling in the driveway. It was a Friday afternoon. Um, I had a gentleman call me. He had gotten a, a piece of direct mail from me. He said, hey, I want you to come over tomorrow and buy my mom's house. And I said, well, you know, I'm booked tomorrow. I had an assistant at the time booked. I said, uh, but I can come over Monday. And they're like, no, it has to be tomorrow. I was like, okay, well, how about tonight? You know, like I wanted to go in and have dinner with my family. Right. And he said, well, here's the deal. It's either tomorrow or we'll just find somebody else. You know, you guys are a dime a dozen. And I don't know if like being a diamond dozen like makes you feel good, but it didn't make me feel good. You know, I'm not, I'm not some sort of hardcore gangster, you know, I mean, <laughs> public school, I mean, I'm not sensitive. I'm getting desensitized, but you know, it just, it hurt my feelings. I was like, you know, this guy doesn't even know me. He thinks, how did I just work myself? And how is it that when I was a teacher, I was so different and unique and I could share my special gifts. And now I'm just a commodity dime a dozen. Yeah. So I, I worked on a plan to change that. And, um, and that's what, and I went back through all my properties that I had done and I looked at kind of two columns, which deals I enjoyed, uh, the most and which ones I made the most profit on, you know, it's okay to make profit. You need to have it to keep your business going. Yeah. And all of them pointed to the same direction, working with seniors. Okay. And so, uh, I said, well, you know, what if, you know, I thought about all the times that I was in seniors living rooms, they had lived in their properties for, you know, 40 years, the, the husband's passed away. They, they don't know how to sell their home. They don't know how to keep their home. They don't know what the options are for senior housing. They don't know how they're going to pay for it. And each one of those questions was answered by a different straight commission salesperson that mm. was pretty much just trying to talk them into their option. Right. So I was like, well, what if instead of me sitting in, in you know, Margaret's living room for four hours, I could create a book that she could read and it would come up with all the options. It would lay out the pros and cons of everything. And then and then she could just pick which one was best for her and her family. And then, um, and then some of those options pointed to me. Of course, she could use me as a service provider. And that's just a natural case. So that's, the book really started from me. I couldn't be everywhere all the time. So I, was, I, start, I wrote the book. I started giving out the book to my senior customers. 
And then I found that actually the highest demand wasn't from my senior customers. It was from their adult children. Ah, you know, they're all over the state. Their parents are getting old. They worry about them, but they have their own lives too. So they're really busy and they don't know what to do with their parents' house. They don't know where to, you know, where their parent could, you know, have the best care. The, the bills are really high for senior housing. And so there was a huge education gap. So, you know, being a teacher, having a master's degree in education, I just wanted to fill that. So I created a book and then I created a workbook and the workbook was basically designed to be a planning course for people who didn't have a plan. And most of my customers that I bought homes from were low to mid income seniors, low to mid net worth. So, you know, like when we go to a real estate mastermind, you know, and that's where I met you, you know, those folks, some of them are doing very well and they have CPAs in their phone and they have attorneys in their phone and they have a great estate plan because they have a lot of assets, you know, but my customers really just, you know, my homeowners that needed to sell their home, they were getting older. They didn't have that. And so, I felt like there was just so many gaps. So I don't want to be a financial advisor. I'm not, disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor, but I, I point them to those folks. And so I created two courses. I teach them. And now I have a network of uh, licensees who teach the courses all over the country and they're educating seniors and they're attracting customers to their business. So it's kind of a win-win. Very, very cool. So you go from being attracted to active income, right? You have, you have the growing large family. Um, right. You, you sort of, is it like two years in where you kind of step back and evaluate yourself because you don't want to be a dime a dozen. You want to continue to be unique. Is that kind of where the inflection point was? Yeah, it was about two years. Yeah. So let's, let's paint the vision for folks. I think most people watching this would already have called you successful at that two year mark and you still saw a better way, but let's paint the vision of where you were at that two year mark. You'd probably done what? 30 deals, 40 deals? What do you think you would have done? Yeah, it was about 30 a year. It was fairly linear. So it was probably about 50 or so deals. You know, I had, uh, it was a mixture of, you know, all of the above. Right. And it was a, you know, the, the day was a lot of running around. At that point, I had an office and three people who worked in America, two overseas. So it was just, you know, just a little local office, local business. You know, we were buying two to three houses a month. It, you know, it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't, you know, the Vanderbilts, but it was great. And it makes it made good active income. And when we saw passive opportunities, we were able to capitalize them. And then we just we're in Texas, and then we just started investing in Oklahoma at that point. Okay. So that's and, about when it was all going on. And at that point, again, the two year mark, had you already left teaching full time? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I left after one year. Okay. So what? Let's let's again. People love to talk about leaving the W two, leaving your day job. And again, you were passionate about it, right? You are you are an award winning teacher. What was that like? Did you just look yourself in the mirror at the end of a school year and go, my, my active income from real estate is 2x my teaching and I'm losing 80 hours a day? Was it just kind of rational or what was that like? It was pretty logical. I mean, it was, you know, just prayer. I just felt it in my heart. You know, sometimes you just, you have reasons for things that are the right intuition and it was. My principal had told me that there were some rumblings that I wasn't coming back next year. He said, you know, you're a very good teacher. So, you know, as much notice as you can give us would be great because, um, you know, we really, it's going to be hard to replace you. And so I just went home and I asked, I just thought about it and it was just the right time. And I just asked my wife, Hey, is it okay if, you know, I leave and, you know, she's got a four month old baby and four other kids and <laughs> there's no hesitation. You know, women are really smart. I mean, I'm not just saying that cause I'm outnumbered in my house, but I mean, <laughs> they just see things, you know, if guys on the, you know, here, they, they don't understand that. Like, listen to your wives because they may communicate a little differently. I don't understand my wife all the time, but she just knows and sees things I can't see. No question. And so yeah. it was just very powerful. She'd been, I mean, she's a huge reason why I've been able to do well. So I just asked her, she said it was good. I already had, I think it's important to already have some deal flow established. Sure. I mean, I can't make decisions for everybody, but I had everything going in my direction. You know, I had great support system. I'd already joined a mastermind. You know, I joined a mastermind on my second deal. Mm -hmm. I saw real quick, that was a fast track formula. Learn from other people's mistakes. You know, I have a good memory, so it's just, that's easy for me. Um, I was on deal number two. I think when I quit, I had savings built up. You know, we had been debt free for a couple of years. So, you know, the market in 2015 was more advantageous, you sure. know, so it's just like, you know, there's a lot of factors and I don't, I don't tell people what to do. I'm not an expert in everybody, yeah. but I would just say, if you have all, if you have factors working for you, then, you know, it might be right. But if you have a lot of factors working against you, um, I don't, I don't encourage people just to quit yeah. because they want to, there has to be some numbers, you know, it's a math thing. 
Oh, no, no question. I think that's wise advice. I think too many people sell the vision of quit your job, hustle, hustle, hustle. And I mean, most folks, if they just jump in like that are destined to not, not make it. So when is the most important thing that will predicate your success? It's not, I mean, you have to work hard, but it's the when. If yeah. the when is working, you know, the timing is working in your favor, it is a lot easier. I mean, you probably could have bought homes in California in 2010, not even rented them out and just yeah. left them vacant <laughs> and then sold them now and made more money than oh, if no. you bought yeah. them now and then sold them in five years if there was a correction. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no question. No so question. So it's like, so that is important. I, you know, people who are getting started right now, it's harder, but I mean, it's where your market is. There's so many factors. It just depends on where you live, but it's a lot harder here now yeah. than it was back when I started. Yeah. So, and then, so that's, this is exactly what I was hoping we'd get to. Now you're at the two year mark. You're already out. You already have a team. You're already successful by anybody's measure. And then you evaluate while you're being successful, what works, what doesn't, what do I get most enjoyment out of? Right. And that, pivot you. It takes your focus another direction to seniors. When did it, when did it appear to you that, you know, the answer is writing a, a, a book? I mean, cause that's, I don't think most people go, I'm going to use a book as marketing hmm. material. No, it's, it's really rare. You know, I just got back from Chicago and I speak on it all over the nation. And for most people, it takes a couple presentations. They come and hear me a couple of times and maybe watch an online thing or something to even understand what it means. There is such a giant misconception about uh, books out there. You know, there's a great book on it called Book the Business by Dan Kennedy. And, if, and essentially, if you, if you take 100 different ways to make money from a book, uh, selling the book is probably dead last. Yeah. And, 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 and it's, but it's an incredible tool for lead generation. It's an incredible tool because... Uh, there's so many factors going for you. My coach at the time um, had published many books and a lot of the folks in my mastermind had published books. Some of them were not super purposeful for lead generation. They just purchased a book because they wanted to be in a book. They wrote like, you know, they co-authored a chapter about a time they overcame a struggle and there's nothing wrong with those books. Um, it's just once you give one to everybody at Christmas, it kind of stops there. Yeah. And, and, and they were kind of frustrated. My friends were frustrated by that because they had these books. They didn't really know what to do with them. And I was like, well, what if I could create a book that just takes my ideal customers three to five biggest problems and then just has a chapter for each one about the solutions. Some of the solutions point to me. Some of them point to other people and just teach them stuff in the book. So Honestly, I don't really know. It's always like a lot, it's happening so fast. And it was like a lot of uh, people and, you know, I'm creative, so that helps. Yeah. Well, I think what you're, you're, you're such a humble guy. What you're underselling is you're a teacher at heart. Now mm -hmm. you, know, you first went to a classroom, which is probably natural, but you've been mm -hmm. a teacher probably since you were a, at least a teenager, if not before that helping folks. And I think you look at challenges as opportunities to dissect Mm -hmm. And then to help others see kind of the problem and then the solution. It's just like math, right? Okay, here's a formula. Here are the things you do. Let's deconstruct it. And then this, this is how you solve it every time. That's the beauty of math is there are right answers and wrong answers. Um, unlike, you know, philosophy and all that other stuff. Right. So I think, that's, I think that's just naturally how your mind works. And then you're charismatic and you're a good speaker and all these other things that you've honed over time. But I think you just have that gift and you found a way while this is what is important while being successful you said i'm gonna go you know this other direction and i think that's important today because the market is different today it's more saturated there's lots of people doing the same thing the 20 postcards now are 200 postcards or whatever it is so i think it's time for people to to look at themselves and go you know how how can i be different and i i think you 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 know you're giving away a a great way to do that so so kudos to you uh i am curious where is this going for you right Again, right now it's now we're at year five. You have these. How many books do you have now? Actually, what are or list them? I mean, there's it's impressive. Well, yeah, I'm on number nine. You know, <laughs> I have it's it's sort of crazy to be honest with you. I don't. It's I mean, you wouldn't believe it if I told you. I mean, I you kind of have to. I'll tell it a bunch. I can give you some references, but you know, I'm dyslexic, and I only read seven books for the first thirty five years of my life because reading's really hard. And I used to tease people, my wife, uh, for like any time she would read a book where there was a movie, I would say, oh, why don't you just watch the movie, you know, and, um, you know, what a waste of time. And I really didn't understand the value of books at all 
until I could just sort of talk my way out of stuff, you know, yeah. and I had good audit because I couldn't read very well. I had good memory. So when my teachers would say stuff, I would remember like every word they said. And that's how I got through school. Uh, but I, I didn't, I wasn't very good at reading. And so um, when I got into real estate, one of my early mentors early on, we were talking about challenges I was facing. And he was like, well, how many books are you reading right now? And I'm like, uh, you know, I'm more of a video guy and stuff, <laughs> you know, you know, you hear that. Yeah, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with me. Video's great and all that's great. But you know, there's this powerful books are powerful. And he said, well, uh, that's your problem. He's like, you know, as long as I'm reading more books than you, you know, you won't be able to compete with me. And I'm competitive because, you know, when you're, you have dyslexia, you're insecure. You know, I didn't like the way that people made me feel and I didn't feel smart when I was at school and people didn't think I was smart. Turns out I am. I had no idea. It took me 35 years for somebody to, to tell me that for the first time. And so I was like, you know, so it felt great. And uh, I, so I started reading, reading, reading. I got with a dyslexia coach, teacher. I actually didn't even know I had it, to be honest with you. That's another story. And I started listening to Audible. I started learning some strategies where you just, you know, like have one line at a time. And, that, and then it's weird. And I read this somehow for some people who have dyslexia, you know, their brain just works a little differently and, and it and it's, helps with maybe creativity for some people. And that's been my experience because reading or writing books has come not easy for me, but I mean, it's natural. I would have never thought it. I mean, just think about like what you're the worst at. And then, then somebody telling you like, that's what you're going to do for a living. Like you would <laughs> never believe them. Never. Yeah. And so I write books for people. I write my own books. Uh, like I said, I'm co-authoring um, this uh, series. I think I got a book. Let's yeah. see here. here it is right here. So this is the book. Home to home. Video. Yeah, home to home. So I wrote that one. And then I wrote the, um, the workbook that goes with it. And there's two classes that are in, in this. And I'm actually going to Orlando Thursday to help this guy, one of our new licensees in Orlando. Do you know uh, Dewey? Nguyen? I do. Yeah. Dewey. Yeah. Has he been on your show? Yes, he has. He's a nice guy. Oh yeah. That's, that's an understatement. He's a high quality guy. So he's got, here's his book and workbook. We just finished those. So he's using them to attract seniors. You know, he's in Florida. There's a fair amount of them. They're everywhere. And so we're going to go out there and um, work with his team to get them coached up. And then he's going to pass out the books and his team's going to do workshops. He has acquisitions people and all that, but yeah, I love writing books. Um, you know, I've got a special gift. I don't, I guess I shouldn't give it away, but yeah, I wrote yeah. a new book on net profit called the net profit workbook. It's about a hundred pages. Nice. It's on Amazon, it, but uh, I'm going to offer it to anybody in your audience who wants it. So I'll have some contact information below and I'll send them a copy. Oh, it's very limited. Nice. I mean, cause you get a lot of people, so we're not doing like a thousand of these, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'll send out quite a few. So just, you know, that's a little gift for your listeners. Thanks for bringing me on. Oh yeah, of course. Well, why don't, so why don't we wrap it up? What, what are all the ways people can follow you, get a, really understand what's going on? Cause you have so many things that again, you're a teacher by heart. So you're always giving, what is that? What is that list of stuff? Yeah. Okay. So ways they can follow me. Yep. I'll put some contact information down below. Um, you know, but the company, our company, our website is customerschasingyou.com. And that's where you can get more information about the book. So if you're, and that's primarily for real estate agents and real estate investors. If they want to work with seniors, they've been wanting to author a book. We have some different programs that's, you know, makes sense for most people. And um, so anyways, it's a great way to generate leads and educate your clients and attract them to you. So, um, you know, I'll put the email address and uh, phone number down below and they can, you know, reach out. I'm, you know, I'm traveling a lot, but I'm pretty accessible. So you can, um, you know, just always schedule some time and we'll talk. And if there's any tips or things that I can do to help, I'd be more than happy to do that. Thanks, Max. This has been so much fun. It's, it's, uh, it's always a pleasure to talk with someone who's, who's authentic and giving and, and quite frankly, just fun to talk to. So I will make sure all the description and notes you gave me are, are in the description of this video. And I just want to thank you for your time. All right. Hey, thanks for everything you're doing and uh, good luck, everyone.